We have a few more slides of varicosities and damage valves. Spider veins. These are the, are the twigs of that upside down tree. They're dilated. They aren't new growth. Nothing is uh, grown in your leg. Uh, simply vessels that were there when you were a small child that are dilated. These are examples of varicosities. This person had the valves at the saponofemoral junction, the top of the greater saphenous vein. Um, had valves that had failed there, and so all the pressure down below caused all these blood vessels to dilate. Spider veins are an extension of the same problem. Skin ulcers occur as the skin eventually breaks down, unable to be oxygenated and uh, unable to receive proper nutrition uh, because of these changes from increased flow and pressure. There are rating systems, uh, classifications of varicosities, uh, ranging from no visible vein disease to skin changes and ulcerations. So how are they treated? First, you have to stop the reflux, meaning the flow of blood down the veins. Just as uh, esophageal reflux, a fluid is flowing the wrong way. In the case of the esophagus, nothing should go up the esophagus. It's considered esophageal reflux. In the case of veins, nothing should go down a vein, away from the heart. Blood is only to flow up the veins towards the heart. Getting rid of the reflux will in many cases resolve the dilated varicose veins, reticular and spider veins. In the case of the first patient we showed you at the beginning of this presentation, his varicose veins shrunk away and disappeared with no further treatment. Treatments in the past have included uh, compression stockings. It's difficult in our state. Um, it's only a symptomatic relief and not very complete relief. There's vein stripping, which I don't think should be done anymore. There's endovenous laser or radiofrequency closure of the saphenous veins, uh, which is our preferred uh, method of treatment. We uh, use the endovenous laser at our office. Ultrasound-guided sclerotherapy can be done, but it has a recurrence rate of 70%. There are some dangers involved in squirting that um, poisonous chemical uh, into the veins to scar them shut, certainly related, uh, relative to endovenous laser uh, inadequate treatment. Ambulatory phlebectomy uh, can be used uh, for the varicosities, but it's important to go to treat the source of these varicosities, or other ones will appear. But once we've treated the deep uh, saphenous vein, uh, we can go then uh, to varicosities that have been dilated for many, many years and uh, take them out using small uh, needle holes about an inch apart in the skin. All of these varicosities run just below the skin, so we numb the skin as we would for uh, laceration repair, uh, make a needle puncture uh, every inch or so and pull the veins out. And the results are immediate and dramatic. It's very safe and painless. Spider veins are often treated with sclerotherapy. Uh, we inject a solution that causes these veins to close up and scar shut and disappear. We find that with varicose veins, younger people, as in the first patient, this man was about 38, have uh, vessels with much more ability to contract. After 50, the dilated veins shrink considerably, but they still say, stay somewhat dilated, and so further treatment is needed, such as the ambulatory phlebectomy. The procedure of vein stripping, again, I, I mentioned that I don't think it should be done anymore. An incision is made towards the knee, a wire is passed up to the groin, a second incision is made there, a metal plum is tied to the vein, and that wire with the plum is pulled back, inverting the vein and, and ripping it out of the leg. It rips the lymphatics and the nerves and uh, other blood vessels. It's, it leads to quite a bit of disability. And many patients say they would never have it done if they'd have known how, how painful it could be. We use laser. Sometimes it's known as EVLT or endovenous laser ablation treatment. 
I think it's superior to radiofrequency ablation, although we are contemplating using radiofrequency to close some perforator veins, which are small refluxing veins. In laser treatment, a laser fiber is inserted into the vein. The laser is activated and pulled back at about a centimeter every five seconds. The plasma of the blood is heated, damages the intima or lining of the vein. The vein will then heal shut. It won't grow back. It's 100% effective in our experience. It is the gold standard for treatment of varicose veins. Historically, complications have included burns and nerve injuries. We don't see those ever anymore because of tumescent anesthesia. A fluid is injected uh, surrounding the vein and insulating it from everything surrounding it. People do have soreness as the vein begins to heal shut. This uh, increases over about three days and decreases over the next week or two. There's bruising that's unpredictable. It can be from the knee to the groin or just a few yellow spots. But again, this bruising goes away in two weeks. Uh, neither this aching nor this bruising interferes with normal activity, and people can go about their daily lives uh, immediately. Many times our patients say this was a piece of cake. They can't believe the uh, uh, operation, as it were, is over that it's time to go home.